the Diadoshi Wars culminated with this battle, the Battle of Corypendium, fought between Lysias Marcus and Seleucius of the Seleucid Empire and Macedon. In 281 BC, this battle did take place. What's up guys and welcome back, I'm Pope John Paul and we're here with another Rome 2 battle for you today. And today we are doing another historical battle, um, as I already mentioned this is the Battle of Corypendium. So this is like the final battle of the Diadoshi Wars. If you don't know what they are, they are the wars between the, uh, well, the Alexander's generals, really. Um, so Lysus Marcus is in charge of the Macedonian army and we have Seleucius I in charge of the uh, Seleucid army. So um, in history, it goes that the Seleucids win the battle, um, but that could always change in today's battle. We could see the Macedonians come out on top. They've got some strong cavalry. They've got the Salian cavalry over here. They've got Mas and Macedonian. Of course, got, this is all Macedonian cavalry. We've got Companion Cav over here. This is a very scary force of Companion Cavalry. Um, and then we've got plenty of uh, infantry, archers, Agriani and Axemen somewhere. Which are like, this slightly one of the, like, they're quite... Poorly armed in this, but in history they were quite well-renowned troops with these Agrianian acts. And we've got plenty of like hot plate shield bearers. We've got pikes, we've got thorax pikes. We've got thorax spears. I'm pretty sure we've got companion, uh, companion pikes somewhere as well. Uh, I can't actually find them to save my life, but they are in there somewhere. We've got thorax swords, obviously. And then on the Seleucid side, we do have uh, plenty of cavalry as well. We have Azat knights. We've got Persian hot plates. We've got elephants, Indian war elephants. We've got Indian armored elephants over here. We've got Hellenic cataphracts. We've got all sorts, plenty of, a lot of similar stuff and a lot of different stuff. So we're kind of going for that like sort of Persian, Eastern vibe for the Seleucid army and for Macedon. They're kind of trying to keep to their base, well not the basic, but their, their ways that they won all those years ago with Alexander. The just like hot plates, Pike lines, companion cavalry, and that's how we're going to do. So I'm going to just speed up ever so slowly, but I hope you guys are enjoying the content at the moment. If you are, then please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. Um, but yeah, so this battle was done with uh, some of the subs and uh, members of the Discord. So if you want to get involved in some of these battles, um, whether it's a historical one, whether it's just a scenario battle, whether it's just a custom battle, um, then do join the Discord, it's in the link down below, um, in the description, and yeah, you can get involved in battles, you can meet other people that want to play Total War, we have great conversation about whatever, Total War, Lord of the Rings, uh, Company of Heroes, whatever, it's just anything and everything, Paradox Games, um, yeah, so, uh, feel free to join if you want to, that's what I was going to say, so, we seem like we're starting now, really, we have the Persian... The light archers loosing a volley into a, what we've got here some basic archers of Macedon. So I'd say that I think the Persian light archers should win this ever so slightly, mainly because I think they are slightly better in uh, accuracy. But I'm pretty sure these archers actually cost more than Persian light archers. They look a lot more basic, I will admit. As they get shot down by a volley, I think they might have a slightly more range than if the archers couldn't reach. Um, the Persian archers over there, and they had to advance. Oh, we got companion cavalry coming forward. Already, companion cavalry. Looked like it was going to make a move, but it's changed its mind. We've got sailing cavalry over here as well. The archers already falling back. One wavering already. We have a big force already uh, mustering over here from Macedon. Well, not big, but a sizable force. We have some Thoros spears. We have sailing cavalry. We have Syrian heavy archers here. What are they focusing down? They're focusing down thorax pikes. Not a bad idea. It was a bold move by, uh, by Macedon for his pikes in the front line. But look at this. This is horrendous. Look at the sun, though. Oh, beating down on this pike line. That looks excellent. All the arrows just poking out of the uh, pikes. That is awesome. But yeah, this unit is already down to 98. Wow. Um, I definitely try to get those pikes out of there. I certainly wouldn't put them in the front line. Especially when they've got... Oh, they've got more pikes here, I guess. Got a lot of pikes in this army. What have we got here? Shield bearers. I'm pretty sure there's a companion pike somewhere. Here he is. Foot companions. They're going to be nasty. Um, the archers are coming forward again on the Macedonian left. This march forward. So I think this is a 2v2. Is this a battle? I am taking part in it. I am playing as the uh, Seleucid army, mainly on the left. 
Oh no, on the right, sorry, I have the uh, like the elephants and the Persian archers. I've got most of the cavalry, I think, as well. There we go. I think this unit's already breaking, yeah. Um, I also have control of the like the silver shield pikes at the backs. We have some thorax pikes as well. But we are outnumbered in pikes. We only have three to there. I think they have six. Does Macedon? Five or six, certainly. So it's going to be hard. But we have elephants, but they are very easy to route. So uh, each army is balanced in different ways. So, I mean, I think we have slightly better range, but they have more, they're better melee. Obviously, we've they've got more cav, but we have elephants. Um, so that kind of limits out. They can also obviously shoot our elephants. Elephants are like this big scary thing, but they're also very easy to destroy. I mean, we have actually destroyed most of their archers, which is very lucky for us. But they still got their Agrianian axemen with all their javis here. Shame they don't actually throw axes. That would be very cool. But um, they could route the elephants quite easily. They could scare them. They don't need to use flaming arrows. You can just throw enough javelins or axes and you'll scare them off. Um, also, if they're just unlucky and get bogged down in infantry, they'll die. And they've got more pikes, so um, that's an advantage for them as well. And they can kill plenty of elephants off with pikes. So it's a bit of a slow build-up. Uh, I do apologize, um, but we are ever so... Uh, soon going to be getting into the battle itself. Here we go, the Hillman coming forward. Persian light archers. Oh yeah, we've got Hillman as well. They're pretty basic and awful. That's what I mean by awful infantry. Well, they have the better infantry. Because we have some absolute awful stuff. But look at this. Look at this line of shield bearers just holding the line here. It's excellent. Volley's coming back now. What's that from? Oh, that's from the Thoros Spears. That's really, really good. That's actually a good use of javelins. What are they hitting? Thorax Swords. Not a bad target. Could be better. Now they're gonna. Now Seleucid's going to bring forward his Thoros Spears to combat that. He's got his uh, Syrian Archers here as well, firing down on them. Look at that Pike unit. I've just even just seen that. Look at that. Destroyed. Before we even saw combat. But, I mean, it looks like they're just getting ready to... The uh, Macedonians just getting their line ready. They're going to take a lot of fire, though. So much fire. And here we go. Look at all the, like, projectiles coming in. It's ridiculous. And then out over there is the Thorax Sword. So they're going to charge in. Here they go. Javis. Oh, my gosh. And then there we go, the Clash of Infantry. Those Thoros Spears are absolutely being. And are they going to break just like that? No, I thought they were. They're on 77 before they actually really took, like, any, went in combat properly. Royal Peltas here, they'll hold the line. They'll hold the line. What have we got over here? We've got more Thorax Spears. Look at this. What is happening here with this unit? I've never seen that before. But then what is happening out on the far left? Far left, not really much. Um, Hillman engaging. Uh, they're not doing so well. So the left could actually be, or the, well, yeah, the left for Macedon, right for the Seleucids. Um, could be in favor of Macedon, because there's a lot more weak troops over here. But, I mean, with the sun beating down, it looks excellent. But here we go. So, I'm trying to now cordon off uh, this part of the army. So, well, mainly cavalry. Look, I've already got this companion cavalry down to 49, which is huge. I was just focusing down with archers. But, yeah, I'm trying to cut it off. So, I'm going to surround this one. Then send these two to sort of just go in between here. And then I'm going to probably march forward with the cavalry and the elephants and try and route uh, that side. The far left is also yet to move. Uh, the two flank battles are yet to happen. But here we go. They're actually just about to happen as I say it. So we'll see this charge. Will Macedon respond? That is the question. I don't think he will. The spear is coming forward to support the cavalry. And here we go. The charge coming in as at night. Oh my gosh. The Javis though on those Thoros spears. A great charge. Taking out a lot of the sailing cavalry. And here come the elephants. Steam rolling in. Boom. It's not so as cool when elephants charge into cavalry. You don't really see, like, men flying around like you do. But the cavalry is routed. Well, not route. One's routing and one's pulling back and spears going in. Um, luckily, the elephants here didn't actually charge into, like, initially when uh, 
like um, the cavalry did, so they didn't actually take on like the full jabby throw, but the Thoros Spear is not doing so well here. Infantry now engaging, we've got Persian hoplites here. We've got as at night, I don't know what, where these guys are going, they're just pulling out. Elephants are going in deep. Oh, Agrian in Axeman, going in deep. Oh my gosh, they can they can have fire jabbies though, apparently. There you go. Going into the back of these pikes. That is going to be devastating. That will be. So let's do a bit of slow-mo now. I think we need a bit of slow-mo. It's going very fast. So, what's happening on the far side? So we have the cavalry that's now engaged over here. And the elephants are coming in to support the cavalry attack. Because they're going to need it. The companion cavalry is still very nasty. Um, even if we have Hellenic cataphracts in here. We've got spears coming up. I'm pretty sure it's um, shield bearers. Yes, we do. And we have a counter charge from the uh, companion cavalry. Which is going to break through and get these archers. So that's very good by Mastodon. Getting rid of the archers. Mowing these guys down. They should take no trouble, really. I'm sending my general in to now uh, try and deal with this companion cavalry issue. The hillmen have re-rallied, but uh, who cares really about that? And I'd say the infantry line is fairly even. We've got Thorax swords breaking early. I've got pikes now coming up to support in this foot companion fight here. We've got archers already committing as well. Jeez, it's getting really, it's getting really that bad. Elephants already in. They're now causing havoc. Um, lots of mage breaking. Look at this. Th I just broke all of these units. Thorax pikes, which is still on 105 men. We've got Thorax uh, swords at 83 and another one at 75 breaking. That's far too early. The silver shield swords was losing to all those units. And no, no wonder, to be honest. Um, and then we've got cavalry over here. Just getting ready to mop up stuff, really. So we're going to go back to normal speed. And we're going to go and see what happens. We've got the general coming in, all sorts. But yeah, these elephants absolutely do an absolute bit. I think they're, yeah, now getting focused on by Agriani and Axeman. They got stuck. I think at this point they were going mad and they just got stuck on pikes. And they did a brave, brave thing, but now they're going to die. Yep. Yeah, they're not having a good time, but this one's going to get a good charge. Oh! That wasn't a bad charge at all, but yeah, it's going. they're going mad now. There's only a three or four left. Um, yeah, I... Presume yeah, our control, yeah. Um and then on this side, it's not looking so good for Mastodon. Um since they didn't actually really get a great charge off with their uh, cavalry, they were quite easy to mop up. The elephants are now out of control. Agrianani and Axman Agriani and Axman, sorry, are doing a great job. But the elephants are gonna charge into the back of this Thorax sword unit here. So it doesn't really matter. But it does look goddamn awesome. And then they're actually still Luckily, like, them going out of control, they actually went in the right direction. They went after the Agrion and Axeman, which I'd also sent my cataphracts after get, to get. But yeah, these elephants doing... They're doing bits as well. They're doing a bit of havoc. And here we go. Royal Peltas versus Thorax Swords. And some archers are in here as well. Can't forget the archers. Look at that in the background, though. Like, all those cavalry just riding up there. Looks excellent. But yeah, so the right is now also cleaned up. So it's now just the center that Mastodon is holding. And he's not doing a terrible job. He's actually probably winning on quite a lot of these fronts. Uh, yeah, I mean, losing decisively. I mean, we, it's only because those elephants came in that they did so well. I mean, we're actually, yeah, losing decisively here. The pikes aren't even actually helping. They're just letting <laughs> this poor infantry unit die. This will be a good charge, though, by the uh, general... Kind of going in to support his infantry. Oh, it's an excellent charge. Excellent charge from the companion cav. And they'll go out. Those silver shield uh, swords have really had a hard time. But we have a general over here. We could presume this one's Lycus Marcus. Um, who does die in history. He does get killed. So it kind of ends um, his hopes of inheriting Alexander's empire. I'm pretty sure after this battle, Seleucius goes on to take over Lycus Marcus as... Uh, like empire, so he takes the Seleucid Empire and the what is at that point the Anta Antigenid uh, Empire or Kingdom. So it's basically Macedon, um, and then for Ptolemy murders uh, Seleucius, so he loses that, and it Seleucius inherits. I don't know who his heir is, but inherits the Seleucid Empire, but he loses uh, his European holdings. Sadly, it's a big, big old mess as the Diadochi Wars. But there you go. So. With the final charge in the back from the elephants, the front line of the Mastodon army has routed. And we have a repeat of history, a close victory for the Seleucid Empire. The enemy is broken indeed. Um, so, 
yeah, so I'd just like to thank Aiden, Beastrol, and Matthew20 for taking part in the uh, battle. It was a, quite fun, actually. I thought it took a bit longer than that, to be honest. It felt longer. Um, it was certainly nervy at parts. Um, even though we had the elephants, I was always worried they were going to just backfire on us. Um, but this one getting 443 kills uh, definitely paid off. Actually, the cheaper one did better than the most expensive one. Um, but then the expensive one was fighting Cav most of the time, so it's harder to get kills. But still did well on 151. Um, as at night's getting 180 kills, not bad. The Cataphract's getting 112. My Archer's getting 174, it's not terrible. My uh, Royal Peltas getting 165, pretty standard for them. 113 for Shield Bearers. I actually really like Shield Bearers after this battle. They didn't get many kills, but then they also weren't that bad up, if you look. If he only got 113 kills, and he still has like barely taken any losses. That's great. My pikes didn't really feature, so that was a shame. Aiden, who's playing as like the main infantry line for the Seleucids, uh, 116 kills with his general, 124 with two of his archers. Excellent. His silver shield swords getting 191. Um, his Persian hot plates only getting 81, which is not surprising. They're pretty awful. Um, his thorax swords getting 160. That's pretty damn good. And his thorax spears getting 82, which is not terrible. Um, Beastral, who's playing as like the main infantry line for Macedon, 139 kills with companion cavalry, um, 115 kills with hot plights, 184 with foot companions. Um, his pikes, his other pikes, only 89. It's a bit of a shame. They get they got focused down though by like um, those archers early on. Shield bearers again getting 90 odd kills. So that's not bad. And then his uh, thorax swords and thorax spears just kind of, kind of got outmatched. Then Matthew 20 was playing as like the cavalry. Um, his cavalry did not do so well. He, he clearly was looking elsewhere and I got the uh, charges off on him. So I got the charges and he was just stuck in combat for the rest of the battle. So yeah, like the sailing cavalry, getting zero kills, 11, uh, 24, uh, 27, sorry, for this companion cavalry. His general getting 36, which is okay. His archers just got focused down. He had a r rough time, but his royal pelt got 302. He only got 810 kills, but 302 of them came from this one unit. Um, and then 121 for his Thorax Swords is the only other notable unit. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed, I know it was a quick uh, battle today, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment uh, if you want to show your support for the channel. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you guys later.